Is a V nickel. Sweet. Oh, 1894, baby. Stop here at the 1760 farm today. Um, it's just after work, it's a Friday afternoon. I had worked a little late, but did manage to get here. But I've really been here a very short time, and it has been an unpleasant day, really, because all I've dug is trash just can after can after can. It's crazy. That's the way it is some days. And I was it's getting dark, so I was going, Well, no. Come back tomorrow. The only thing I dug today that was anything was a modern Jefferson nickel and a wheat penny. And then right here on the lawn, I got this. Now, I don't know if that's a sterling thimble. It's very shiny. Um, it came out of the ground dark, but the dirt just fell right off of it. And it rings up like 75, 76. It might be sterling, but I don't see any markings on it that say sterling. It does have three names on it. It has Dawes, D-A-W-E-S. It has Sackett, S-A-C-K-E-T-T. -T. And it has Coolidge. Coolidge, Sackett, and Dawes. Not sure what that means, but I will look it up when I get home. And I will also try to clean this up and get some high-res pictures. So it might be my first sterling symbol, uh, thimble, but maybe not. It might not be sterling. Uh, it might be some other weird alloy that seems to repel the dirt. But uh, nonetheless, that's a nice find. Especially after a day where all I've done is dig junk, junk, junk. So it turns out that this little thimble uh, is actually an interesting piece of history. It's not sterling silver. Uh, I bought a silver test kit and checked it out. Pretty sure it's aluminum. Um, but it's still old and it's still historically significant. Uh, as you recall, uh, it has some names on it. It has the name Coolidge and the name Dawes. Uh, and Coolidge and Dawes were presidential running mates in 1924. I'm sure you've heard of the president, Calvin Coolidge. His vice president was Charles Dawes. This is a campaign thimble. Uh, during their campaign, these were given out to prospective voters. You know, just like you would give out, uh, you know, uh, pins or, or um, bumper stickers or lawn signs today. Um, originally, there would have been blue paint around the band, or perhaps on some of them a stripe of red and a stripe of blue, uh, and the letters would have shown through. There's also the name Sackett on this. I did some research into their campaign and I can't figure out who Sackett is. It's not mentioned in the, in the information I looked at, so I think it might just be the manufacturer of the thimble. I don't know for certain. But anyway, that's what this thimble is. It dates to 1924. Uh, and uh, it was used as a advertising for the campaign of Calvin Coolidge and Charles Dawes. Calvin Coolidge, of course, won uh, that election and became, I don't know, like the 31st president or something like that. Anyway, 
interesting little piece of history. I'm tired. Are you tired? Oh yeah, I'm tired. We're tired. So uh, I didn't record any finds today. Uh, we're back on the 1760 property. I'm here with my buddy Bill. Hey. Digger Bill here, and uh, we've uh, we've uncovered a few a few interesting things. Come take a look. Show you what we got. All right. So these are well, these are mostly my finds. Um, as always, a uh, bunch of bullet casings, bullets, a big old beer slug. I've uh, got a little bit of modern clad there. It's a modern clad quarter and a zinc penny. This is nice. This is an old 1800s flat button. It does have a little bit of patterning on it. I think it's too small to be considered a dandy. I'm not sure if that's what they call tomback. It seems oddly shiny to me. That might be a tomback button. I'll have to look into that. Uh, <clears throat> then we got a modern shotgun shell. Um, actually, Bill found this, but he gave it to me because he's a nice guy. This uh, porcelain insert for a ball mason jar lid. Uh, pond stream jar. Sort of square one. Never seen one like that. This little tube. It's another find of Bill's. Look at the cap. Isn't that cool? A nice pattern on it. I may keep the cap. And there is something written embossed on the tip of the tube there. I'll clean that up later. See what I can make out of that. A couple more bottles from the um, bottle bag. This one says uh, Forma Mint Tablets. It's even embossed on the lid. See that? It's pretty neat. And this little perfume bottle. Bill found that one. That's pretty cool. I found one of these, the lids to one of these a week ago and didn't know what it was. That's what that goes to. Uh, another little D buckle, just an iron one, and this lovely suspender clip that Bill found, and it does have something written on it. I can't make it out. Can you guys? We'll let Bill clean that up and do a little research. Maybe he can find out what that is. But that's definitely old. Beautiful brass clip. And then the part going around it, look, the frame is iron. See how corroded the frame is? Neat, though. All in all, a good hunt. We're very tuckered out. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, that's the way it is. You, you come, you, you dig for three, four hours, you turn up a lot of modern stuff, and then you find one or two little things that make you come back. Anyway, go ahead and say goodbye, Bill. Hey, have a good one. There you go. All right, it's time for burgers. This week on the shout out, I'd like to recommend the Relic Recoverist. Jocelyn is a YouTuber that I've been watching for about a year now. Uh, she's very, very enthusiastic. She's a mom, and uh, you know sometimes she brings her kids along, and they seem to be a lot of fun. They have a lot of fun detecting with her, and uh, she gets on some really great adventures. It's not always detecting with her. She does bottle digging. She gets into very, very interesting places. And she's got a really good spirit. I definitely recommend you check out Relic Recoverist, Jocelyn. Well, <clears throat> I'm on my way down there. Uh, to the tree line over there. That's a funny area. And I feel like it has some potential. Because if you went straight through that tree line and you went like another hundred yards, you'd get to the spot where... Tracy found that beautiful 1818 matron head large scent. Um, and down along the tree line there, there's a lot of modern signals. I, I just feel like it has some potential, so I want to work my way over there today. But I'm here in the dirt area, I was just sort of walking through it. And right around here, there used to be a structure. The people who live here told me there used to be a gazebo here. And it was recently torn down, and the ground here is just incredibly thick with iron. Uh, when the detector goes over this, it's just a constant growl, you know, loud, rumbling tone. It never stops. There's just iron everywhere. In fact, it's almost impossible to use the, the pinpointer. Anywhere you set it down, it goes off because there are nails in the soil. But uh, it just goes to show you how nice this AT Max machine is. And even though this area has gone, been gone over by me, Tracy, Digger Dave, you know, multiple times, can still pull relics out of this little patch of dirt. Look. That's a nice little flat button. Dates to the 1800s. The shank is broken, unfortunately. It's tiny. Maybe a quarter of an inch in diameter. But even amid all the iron in here, I managed to, you know, to pick it out. Squawking at 65 amid all the low tones. It's crazy. 
I have a funny feeling um, this is something I got to do. Uh, maybe that would be a good winter project. So I, I need to build a sifter. Uh, you know, get some lumber together, get some chicken wire or some fine mesh or something, and build a sifter that I can throw in my car and bring out here and sift this soil. Because I know there's more to find in here, and I just, you know, it's so hard to hear it right here because, of, because the iron is so thick. And also, I'd like to take the sifter over to the bottle dump, because uh, you know, there's lots of small things that are worth finding, like porcelain buttons and marbles that aren't going to show up on the detector. So, yeah. Anyway, that's a sweet little find. Cool. Let's keep it going. Well, this is a peculiar find. <coughs> First of all, it appears to be sterling silver, but uh, it's only a tiny piece of something larger, which isn't here. Have a look. There we go. F and B sterling, see? It's very flexible because it is incredibly thin. It was part of some sort of a clip, maybe a tie clip or a money clip or some kind of clip. See, it was folded there on one side, it's got these grooves, and on the other side it's flat, and it's got the maker's mark, F and B sterling. So I should be able to look that up, maybe find out what it was part of. And it is incredibly light, because it's so thin. I mean, it's a piece of sterling, but I would venture a guess that it's less than one gram of sterling. It might be half a gram which would mean it's worth something on the order of 30 or 40 cents, but still, any day you find silver is a good day. That makes this a good day. And it was already a good day because I found a flat button. I believe that's an old hobnail from a hobnail boot. And that was just right on the surface. It's amazing. Uh, this place never ceases to, do, to surprise me. You know, you get stuff... Um, popping up on the surface that should be deep but who knows I'm gonna keep looking I'm gonna keep looking I'm getting I'm starting to jones a little bit I'm starting to get like I really want to find an old coin wow oh, it's working hard for this one down in the clay layer uh, sound is for all the world like just another shotgun shell and uh funny. I mean, I've had a pretty good day. I got a flat button and a little piece of sterling. But for some reason, I was just jonesing really hard. I really wanted to find a coin. And I, I didn't find a coin. But I'm not jonesing anymore. Check it out. Look at that! This is a crotal bell. A little baby crotal bell that would have hung on a wagon. It's complete. And that's the old style shank, so that's a really old one. So this crotal bell probably hasn't rung in over a hundred years. I'm going to clean it out now, because I bet the dingler is still in there, and we're going to see if it dingles. Alright, so I'm going to pause this, and we'll see what happens. It dingles. The dangler is still in there and the dangler still dingles. This bell hasn't rung for a hundred years or more. It's down a good eight inches. This is only the second one I've ever found. Um, the last one I found rang too. It was bigger than this one. This one I think is the smallest size. That's music to my ears. Mm. Mwah. I love curdle bells. Sweet. I'm going to go show the homeowner. I think he'll like this. That's cool. Isn't that neat? Still rings. That bell's been silent for over 100, 150 years. You're hearing it ring for the first time. It would have been on the ox or something? It would have been on a wagon. Oh, okay. They would hang these on a horse-drawn cart. Yeah. Jeez. I'm not showing your face because I figure you want privacy. That's right. Yeah. Good eight inches down in the clay layer out there. Wow. But that's the old style shank, that rectangular shank. That's beautiful. Isn't that nice? Is it all brass? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is called a crotal bell. Crotal. Crotal. Crotal bell, yep. 
And they came in all different sizes. They usually have that, that flower-like pattern. And sometimes they would have a number here. This is the number one, but the number isn't on it. Well, this has been a good hunt. Uh, I didn't find the coins I was looking for, but I did find some cool stuff. So I'm very happy. Um, let's go over what I did find. All right, so we got this bottle. Uh, it just says half pint on it. Or I think it says half pint. It might be quarter pint. Quarter pint. Um, the bottle's a bit of a puzzle to me. It has a screw top, has a seam all the way to the top. So it can't be that old, but it doesn't have metric on it. So it's got to be older than 72. But it doesn't have a prohibition warning on it either. So I think we can pin it down to somewhere between 1965 and 1971, that general time frame. Then we have this lovely crotal bell. The dingler is still in there. It dingles very nicely. Um, that's a good 100, 150 years old. Beautiful piece. A couple of shotgun shells, 20 gauge. Um, we got uh, a lovely little flat button, a hobnail, a little tiny piece of sterling, part of a clip. This guy here, which is a lead ball, but it's too big to be buckshot. Um, let's see, we've got a little stack of the usual uh, modern bullets, modern bullet casings. That's uh, the tip of a modern archery arrow. Uh, we got a kind of a nice square nail. Decided to keep that one. We'll tumble it. And then this big chain and hook. Uh, rings up kind of high, so I think the hook might be some sort of brass alloy. It looks rusty, but I'm going to tumble this one. I like this. I think that's kind of interesting. I may end up hanging that somewhere. Uh, going to get a trophy room going eventually, and that may go in there. But there you go. Definitely a good day. I never get tired of that. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys. See you on the next hunt.